So, you think you want a horse? Well, this week on The Paul Report, we'll talk to Penny Allen from Paradise Equestrian Therapy in Mattoon about everything you need to know before you make the decision to take on a horse, from equipment to veterinary care and more. Stay tuned, The Paul Report starts now. Welcome to the Paul Report. I am here today with Penny Allen from Paradise Equestrian Therapy here in Charleston. And Penny, we're talking about, so you think you want a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and I assume there's a lot more to, you know, just going out and buying a horse. Oh, ex yeah, exactly. Uh, you might as well say it's almost like having a child <laughs> because you have to take care of them. You know, there's a lot of things involved. So it uh, depends on what kind of horse you want. Uh, who you're buying it for, for your, you know, your children or yourself. There's all different breeds. I mean, you know, there just depends. So it's probably like choosing any pet, right? I mean, you have to consider what's right for your family, what kind of job maybe do you want the animal to do. Exactly. Um, energy, things like that. You want to talk about some of those, you know, maybe if you're um, deciding that you do want a horse, what are some of the things that you need to look at in terms of that? Uh, first of all, you need to have a, a, a good place to keep them. You need a barn, a shelter for them. You need probably a couple acres per horse to have them to graze on, stuff like that. Um, and if you don't have a lot of grass, you need to have hay. There's feed consider. Um, there's just all kinds of things you got to consider. And that can be costly, especially nowadays. The, the average price of a bale of hay right now is like between 5 and $9 a bale. Oh, okay. It, were, it used to be like 3 or $4, and with the shortage of the drought we had, it, it, re it really hurt bad. So. Uh, if you're considering it, you better put some money aside because it's probably going to cost you about $500 a month to, to take care of a horse. So Okay, and that's yeah. including everything. Is there equipment that comes along with this? Too? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're going to ride, you need saddle and bridles and uh, saddle pads and all that stuff. And that, you're talking probably in between $400 to $1,000 for a saddle. Okay, so, so but you can go to auctions like you know sale barns and places like that and pick up used stuff. So okay, mm -hmm. so there's that available out there too, auctions yes. and used yes. things. Um, so, what are kind of the things you need to consider in the decision to make a horse? Can you talk about some of those? You know, what what process do you have to go through in your mind before you say, okay, yeah, I can definitely take on a horse? Um, you would have to consider. Um, the upkeep. I mean, there, you know, there's maintenance on them, just just like anything else. You, um, they have to have veterinarian care. They have to have shots, vaccinations. You have to have their feet trimmed, their hooves trimmed every six to eight weeks. Um, I would say the majority of people that get a horse just think they can just throw it out in some place in the yard, say the backyard and stuff like that. And it really doesn't work that way. You got to have it planned out before you ever think about it. Um, the prices of the horses, right now they are fairly cheap and stuff. There's a lot of people that can't afford to get them, you know, can't keep them and stuff, mm -hmm. so you can usually pick up a horse pretty cheap. But you want to really check into it, make sure if it's, you're buying it for, you know, your children or whatever, you want to make sure it's child-proof, safe. Um, that's very important. Um, if you're going to trail ride, you better make sure that horse has been rode out in the woods. You don't want to buy a horse that's been a show horse mm -hmm. because they, you take them out in the woods and they don't have a clue what's going on and they can be really spooky, so. I mean, there's just all kinds of factors. Like I said, if you're going to do something like that, you really need to talk to somebody that's got horses. There's a lot of people in our area that have horses, so you go to somebody and talk to them, ask them questions. You know, you know, if you're really interested in that. But there's a lot to consider when you get a horse. It's just not like you know, throw them someplace and that's it. They're going to take care of themselves. They're not. You have to take care of them. It's your responsibility. I so. assume there's daily chores with oh, horses. Yes. Can Fiends. you talk about <laughs> kind of what your typical, you know, horse day is like sure, when you sure. get home? Uh, I get up early in the morning, feed them. I kind of have them on a pretty good set schedule. Uh, I feed them early in the morning. I mean, you have to grain them, hay them. Um, then you have to clean stalls and, you know, you have to buy shavings and stuff and keep them in your stalls. If you keep them in the barn, we, we turn some in, some out, mm -hmm. rotate them and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, there's, you know, that's just a daily thing, twice a day, you know, and check on them. If I'm there all day long, you have to go out and check on them because, you know, 
They can get themselves in trouble. Even if you had them in a pad cell, they find a way to get hurt. <laughs> really? <laughs> they're just, yeah, they're just like kids. They can find some little thing to get hurt on. So <laughs> doesn't matter if you think you've got it horse-proof, child-proof, anything. It can prove you wrong. Yep, yep, sure can. So <laughs> okay, so it's not just a one-time-a-day investment, no, you know, because no. I'm sure there's people out there that may think, oh, it's probably like a dog, except easier because you can just put it outside and leave it. Yeah, no, no, not at all. It's uh. It's a, it's a major chore, it really is. Uh, right now we have nine, we, we usually keep between nine and 10 or whatever at my facility and stuff. And then we borrow some off and on for our, you know, we use for our writing lessons and stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it's, it takes like an hour and a half, two hours a day. And then you have to consider if you're gonna do it during the winter time, that's when it's really cold. And you have to have a, uh, like a heated water bucket for them so their water's not froze. And yeah, it, there's a lot to it. Yeah, that was my question, you know, cause I always said, Oh, I don't think I could have horses. I was telling my husband this one day because I think I would have to have them all in a heated and air conditioned barn all day. <laughs> I would just worry about them standing out there. So what is winter like for a horse? Um, they um, they get hair when it cools off and stuff. Their, their coat changes and it goes from a smooth coat to a real heavy, thick, you know, furry coat. Now, not all horses will get real heavy coats and then you have to put blank, you can get blankets and put on them and stuff like that. Um, they need a shelter to get in out of the wind and stuff like that. Um, it just depends on you know if how bad a winter we have and stuff. But uh, yeah, if it's icy and slick outside, they can fall down, and break a leg. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, because horses get to run and they get to feeling good and frisky, and they can actually slip and fall and break a leg real easy. So, okay, so season change, something yep. else to consider around yep. here. Whether yep. you can tolerate leaving a horse outside, I guess you yep. know, I'm yep. sure there's different things. What are the different types of uh, things that horses do that you might want to consider if you're buying a horse. You know, there's horses you can ride, there's working horses. What kinds of things like that are there to um, think about? Well, like I said, there's, you can get a horse, you know, if you want to go trail riding, like a lot of people like to go camping and take the horses over the weekend and go like to Shawnee and different, you mm -hmm. know, parks and stuff like that. Um, you want to make sure you got a horse that's, you know, that can do that type of thing and because they tie them out, leave them tied out all night. Um, if you're interested in showing, there's all kinds of horses uh, to show like pleasure, barrel racing, you know, uh, rodeo's really big. Um, I know Eastern has now a horse program where they do showing and stuff like that. Okay. Uh huh. And um, there's just all kinds of horses, um, driving horses. You know, just, it just depends on what your interest would be. Are there certain types of horses that are better for certain types of people? Um, are there horses that are better with children, just kind of like there are dog breeds that are better with children? Um, yeah, actually, for children and stuff, a lot of people think of their kids, they're going to go buy their you know, child a, a horse or I something. I want a pony. You hear or, that a yeah, lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, or I want to get a young horse and they can grow up together and teach each other. That doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, well, somebody's got to know what they're doing. So the horse needs to be, you know, like a horse that's older, it's uh, been trained real well and stuff, and it's, and it's safe for a child. Um, if you're a beginner, I would always advise you get an older horse, a good horse that's been older and been through everything, they'll kind of teach you. Mm -hmm. And that's the easiest thing for a person to learn on It's never had a horse. You don't want some young horse that's never been really trained real well and stuff because they mature just like children do. Okay. <laughs> Takes a while. So young horses are not for first time horse no, owners. No, 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 that is a bad thing. I don't, I don't know how that ever got started, but that's an old adage, you know, they can learn together, but somebody's got to know how to do the training or whatever so somebody needs experience <laughs> okay so say you decide you want a horse around here where do you where do you go are there auctions or because mm -hmm. you know there's it's not like a pet store no, no. <laughs> you know you don't see horses um, you can go store. online there's oh there's hundreds of websites and stuff called oh, there's horse.com dreamhorse.com mm -hmm. um, Arthur sale barn around here has sales you can look you know you can go online find all kinds of places horses are sale there's local listings. I think there's some on Craigslist, and just <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised where people put horses and stuff like so that. But that's easy access, yes. Okay. Uh, and what do you want to do when you're going to get this horse? What do you want to look for when you're buying a horse? What do you need to be careful about? Um, you want to make sure they're sound, and uh, by that I mean like they're not lame. Um, you want to make sure their feet's in good condition. The horses can founder. It's another thing in the spring when the grass comes on. It's real rich and high in carbohydrates, and there's a lot of horses and ponies are notorious for foundering. And once they do that, they're they're rent for life. So and in layman terms, what is that? Uh, um, actually, their hooves will grow out real long, and the coffin bone in the in the sole of their foot will actually rotate from it. it they get like a fever in their feet, and it, it's quite an ordeal and stuff like that. Mm. And it, it, it's a very ex expensive thing to ever get them corrected, and they're never usually 100% sound. And you always have to watch putting them out on fresh grass like that because like I said it's so rich and stuff in the spring you have to watch that so 
Yeah, you gotta know what you're doing if you're gonna get a horse. It's like I said, it's not something you can just throw out in your yard and think that's all you gotta do for them. So. Okay. And what about maintaining pastures? Um, if you're not necessarily, you may have to supplement with feed and hay and things like that. But um, what about pasture? What do people need to know about that kind of um, care? You you need to keep it mowed. Um, if you can mow it, or, you know, like once a month or whatever during the summertime, it'll keep the weeds out. You don't want your horse eating weeds because there's a lot of weeds that are poisonous to okay. horses, especially in our location and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to keep it mowed. Um, you can reseed it every, you know, like in the spring or in the fall or something like that. So you got good pasture. Horse needs uh, the fiber from grass and stuff like that. That's really what their basic diet is, because we've confined them and we keep them on different, you know, like lots and stuff like that, because they don't free roam like they used to. You know, they used to graze and get all their grains and vitamins and stuff like that. Sure. So now we supplement all that stuff. So you got to do, you have to consider that too. So okay. What type of hay and what type of grain to get, give your horse. You know, you can give them too rich a, a grain or you can give them too rich a hay, like alfalfa's real rich mm -hmm. compared to grass hay. So some horses can tolerate it, some can't, so. Okay, and what is veterinary care like for horses? What do you need to think about there? Because I'm sure there's costs as well as Very time expensive. associated with that. Yeah, um, like I said, your horses have to have annual shots just like your dogs and cats do. They vaccinate them for like West Nile, uh, tetanus, that type of thing. Um, and every once in a while, somebody bring a horse from out of country, out of state in your area, and they can bring in new diseases and stuff like that. So they have like a five-way, six-way for different types of, uh, you know, viruses that are out there, and, and you have to watch that. Um, it can be very expensive. They have to have their teeth floated at least once a year because they're not out eating the roughage like they used to in the wild. Mm -hmm. So we have to have their teeth done. Uh, at least once a year they float them and stuff and grind them off just like you know so that they don't you know have teeth trouble because they can't eat the older horses you have to do maintenance on their teeth a lot more because their teeth get weak and start falling out then you have to change your feed so yeah like I said it's almost like having a child. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a lot to consider and care yes. about there so uh, what is the lifespan of a horse because I assume that you're getting into an investment here in time. Exactly. Um, they can live anywhere. The average age is probably in the late 20s. Um, I've got a couple of friends that's got a couple that's in the early 30s and stuff, and that's you know that's about the extent of it. But that's because they've had good care and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh, like I said, the horses out in the wild probably don't live that long because, well, they just don't get the care that you know they do here. You know when you have your own personal horse. So. Sure. But yeah, the average age I'd say late 20s. Okay. So you're not getting into a 10, 12 year investment like you might with a dog. Right, right. Okay. No, it's a little this bit longer than that. So a little bit longer care and a lot more maintenance probably. So. Okay. And what about equipment? If I were to go buy a horse today, what else do I need to buy? Well, you'd have to have a halter that fits right, your lead rope. Um, if you're going to ride, you need a saddle, a saddle pad. Like I said, there's different, you know, you can get all kinds of pads. There's different thicknesses. Um, your saddle needs to fit your horse properly. That's another thing people don't consider. They just go someplace and buy an old saddle or whatever and throw it on your horse. Well, if it doesn't fit your horse correctly, it will actually make their back sore and then you've got a problem there. Okay. So you have to be kind of careful. Ask somebody, you know, like I said, if you're starting out, have them help you fit your saddle and your saddle pad to your horse to make sure your saddle fits proper. Okay, so that's the kind of thing, reach out to the horse community sure. in your town, because yep. I assume there's probably one just in every town, maybe oh, in our yeah. viewing area, there's people that know about sure. horses. Sure, I mean, you'd be surprised how, uh, this is horsey country, <laughs> actually a lot of, you know, a lot of horses here in this area, there's, we have race horses, you know, trotters, pacers, we have people that show uh, barrel racing and stuff like that, so there's a lot of horses in this area, a lot of trail riders. Mm -hmm. And that type of thing. I've noticed so. there's even some Clydesdales yes, around the yes, area. Yes, there is. Yes, there. As a matter of so. fact, one of my vets, he has Clyde, you know, Clydesdale horses mm -hmm. and shows them too. Mm -hmm. He travels all over and shows them. So. Okay. Are they primarily show horses? Are Clydesdale show horses or are um, they working horses? The, they, you know, the, the Amish now they use them. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, that's their. You know, they use the Clydesdales. They don't usually use Belgian. They use Belgians, mm -hmm. which are the the bigger ones that are kind of uh, palomino colored. Right, okay. And uh, they use theirs for work mainly, but uh, around here in this area, they just, sh they mainly show them and stuff like that. They have different classes uh, of pulling wagons. They show them in halter where they just go by confirmation mm -hmm. and just different things like that. Are there certain breeds of horses that do well around here and certain ones that don't? Um, actually, no. Um, I would say just about any breed of horse that do. I know a lot of people's got uh, you know, paint quarter horses. There are different breeds like quarter horses, paint horses. I'd say the quarter horse is probably the most popular mm -hmm. in this area and stuff like that because it's uh, 
kind of a horse for you can do anything. You can work cattle. You okay. can you can barrel race. You can show and halter. You can do western pleasure. Uh, just English, you know, all kinds of things with them, so. Okay, so is there a big um, competitive community of horses in the area? Um, yeah, there's a lot of barrel racers in this mm -hmm. area. Rodeo, a lot of the high school rodeo's big. Okay, yeah, I forget junior, that there's Junior, junior rodeo, junior. Mm -hmm. We used to host a lot of junior rodeos and stuff like that, and the, the kids, that'd be like between eight and 12, eight and 12, I think okay. it is, and then after 12, they go 12 to 18 okay. for, the, for the high school and stuff like that. So, so there's really there is that competitive culture here, sure. too, oh, if you're yes. interested in yes. that. Yes. Okay. Um, so what would your best advice be, you know, for someone starting out, looking into researching a horse? Would you would you say first to go talk to the horse people? Yes, I, I definitely would, and, you know, find, like I said, you, you can go on the internet anymore and find, you can find anything on the internet, but you can find people a uh, chat room maybe or a group that's or a 4-H go to 4-H if your kids are interested find the 4-H club uh, that's got the horse division in it and talk to them okay so are there you know agricultural extension offices and things like that would they know about horses um, in this area pro probably U of I mm -hmm. uh, you know they have the big large animal clinic up there and stuff sure. like that so uh, a lot of times if you have a major surgery and stuff a lot of a lot of us will take our horses to U of I up there and stuff okay. so and they have horse programs up there also. And Parkland College has uh, regular classes you can take uh, if you're interested in horses. So you can go to school up there and get a degree in that, so. Okay, so there's plenty of information and availability out there, but there's plenty of consideration too to take on buying a horse. Yes. <laughs> Thinking you want a horse, I guess I should yes, say. Yeah. Um, how did you get interested in horses? When did that all start for you? Um, actually, my parents had horses when I was born, mm -hmm. and my dad showed horses, rein horses, and uh, halter horses and pleasure, so I got to travel a lot when I was young, so just kind of, if it's in your blood, it just is. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stays with you. Uh -huh. And what's that like, you know, the culture of traveling for horse racing and shows and things like that? Oh, it, it, it was, it's kind of like a family thing usually your whole family goes and that's one thing about the, the high school and junior rodeo too that is all family oriented and it's fantastic because the whole family spend the weekends and like from Friday to Sunday together and stuff and when they're competing and stuff like that but it's kind of a family thing actually so that's a good thing okay and what is a competition for someone that's maybe never seen a horse race or barrel racing or competition what are some of those like what kinds of things are they asking the horses to do um, I go to fairs in the summertime like mm -hmm. that. They have the trotting races, and some places have thoroughbred races, um, that type of thing. Okay. So you could see that around here. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Okay. Um, the rodeos, I mean, like I said, you go online, you can find out where the nearest rodeo is, where the horse shows. We have local horse shows at, uh, like, over at Mattoon, uh, Shelbyville, Sullivan, all, all places have a horse arena and stuff and they have a lot of horse shows in this area. You'd be surprised. Are there any like horse groups or clubs around this area if someone were looking for information or um, to join? Yeah, um, there's trail riding groups. Um, there's, uh, like I said, if you go to uh, on, online stuff and just type in like whatever you're interested mm -hmm. in, like barrel racing, it'd come up and show you everybody barrel races probably in this area. It'd name uh, all the groups, organizations. There's the Illinois Barrel Racing Association. Uh, there's the, you know, if you're interested in getting on, like the trotting horses or the buggy horses, the racing horses, sulkies, uh, you just go to your local track and stuff like that. And there's, you can talk to those guys. They'll show you and talk to you. They're really interested about helping people get, they want to keep that going, so. Okay, do you, are you in any competitive? Um, I used to barrel race a lot, yeah. yeah. I barrel raced for years and stuff like that, so. Okay, and what's that like? Fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's fast. Uh -huh. um, when you're showing like a uh, Western pleasure class or walk, where the walk, trot, canter type thing, they have a judge that judges that. And then when you get into the speed uh, events and the competition like that, you run against the clock and that's that's more fun. So I mean, you know, you're not dependent on somebody whether they like your horse or like you or whatever. The competition of it is you're just running against the clock, so. Okay. And since you're a horse person, you know, do horses have personalities just like people? Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> um, I've got, we've got halflingers, we've got Norwegian fjords, uh, quarter horses, paint horse, Tennessee walking horse, and every one of them's personality is different. Really? Oh, my. Um, <laughs> the little draft ponies, which are halflingers and the Norwegian fjords, they have, a, they're kind of like an own personality. I don't, it's, yeah, they can be ornery, they can be sweet, they can just, yeah. So ponies are more of a kind of an ornery type pony, you know, uh -huh. horse or whatever. They get more personality. Um, uh, it, yeah, they're just like people. They all have different personalities. Some love people. Some 
not so much, but they tolerate it, you know, mm -hmm. and then there's others that they see you coming here, they come, they come <laughs> running, so. So, you know, that's also something to consider, I suppose, exactly. when you're choosing a horse. Exactly. Um, I assume when you go to choose a horse, you be able to interact with it or watch it first? Oh, sure, I'm sure, yeah, never buy anything without riding it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have your own saddle already, go take it with you and, and ride it or see if the people let you take it home and try it for a week or two. That's usually the best thing because sometimes you ride a horse at somebody's facility or whatever and then you take it home and then it's it's not it's never been away from that facility mm -hmm. and you can get yourself in trouble. So if they'll let you take it home and ride it, that that's the best way to try it. Okay. And for a first time horse person, can you train a horse yourself or should you get that horse trained? Uh, if your first horse it, it needs to be trained. And then after you know if you have say you went through two or three horses and that's older and they're, that's broke real well, mm -hmm. then you might consider doing something like that. You'll already know some of the things to look for and it make it a little bit easier. But your first horse, you don't want to try to train your horse. Your, you need to you know, have some instructions <laughs> before you do that. Leave that to the experts yeah, maybe the yeah, first time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's a good idea. And what's your favorite thing about horses? What do you love so much about horses? Oh, I would say it's just, um, there's just something about them. I don't know where it's the look in their eye or whatever. Uh, what is it? Winston Churchill said it's the the inside of a or the outside of the horse is the best thing for the inside of a man or something like that. <laughs> and th and that's a pretty true thing. Mm -hmm. I, um, I've just seen a lot of great things happen with people and horses too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you also do equestrian therapy, so mm -hmm. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. seen a lot of great interaction there. We're yeah. gonna have you on for a later show about okay. that. So, yep. okay. Well, is there anything else you think people before we go here? We got a, about a minute or so left. People might need to know about horses before they decide they want to go out and get one? Um, they're, they're like anything else. They're, I mean, even a good broke horse could get spooked mm -hmm. and could, you know, you could, you know, throw you off, get, you know, something, a dog could startle them or something like that. So they're a large animal and they're powerful. They're a very powerful animal and stuff. So um, just always use caution. Never, you know, never get too relaxed. I've seen people be relaxed on their horse out trail riding and say a deer run across them or something and then the horse turns spooks and they fall off so I mean just never get relaxed I mean you just use caution just use your head uh, helmets now then a lot of people are riding with helmets mm -hmm. when they're trail riding I recommend that okay <laughs> just to, just to be on the safe side well we so. have to remember that they're still animals exactly it's just exactly. like they're, a dog you know just because exactly. you, your dog's never bitten you right doesn't mean that it couldn't or it won't because right, they right. still have those instincts so I That's, assume the same goes with horses exactly I mean they still have that fear of flight or, you know, flight or fight. Mm -hmm. That's just normal and that's just the way they're bred, so. Okay, all right. Well, Penny Allen from Paradise Equestrian Therapy here in Charleston, we thank you for coming on today and we'll look forward to having you back sometime. All right, thank you very Thanks. much. If you're a veterinarian, trainer, groomer, specialist, rescue organization, or shelter that would like to partner with The Paw Report by providing expert guests for the show or animals to be featured on our adoptable pet segment, please contact us by emailing kfpleasant at eiu.edu or call 581-6960. Or if you have a topic you'd like to see on the show or questions for our experts, contact us with those too. If Maggie could speak, she would have quite a story to tell. The day after Christmas, in this snowstorm, she disappeared. So we went out looking for her, but it was white out conditions, so it was really hard to try to find her. And, you know, I looked for the next two days, but kind of lost hope. Desperate as the days stretched on, Dundee's radio station, WFLR, made a plea to listeners. It's tough um, once I started to lose hope, and I didn't really know where to look, but... I just still felt like I had to, you know, I had to be out there at least trying. It's pretty sad to think that a dog's missing because I really like dogs. Sixth grader Austin Gibson didn't know it at the time, but he and he alone would be the only one who could help. I was sitting on a snowbank practicing my tricky call when I saw something brown and I called my dad. At 17, Maggie, a Lab Springer mix, walks and sees with difficulty. She hears even less, but at the sound of the call, <coughs> she stood up from where she had burrowed into the snow nearly a mile from her home. She was just standing there wagging her tail and looking at us. And I ripped my coat off and put it around her because she was shaking. 
and she was really cold. A reunion after five long days made possible by the unique skills of an 11-year-old and the determination of a 17-year-old. And maybe a little something else. It's not like you can go out and call and she'll come. She couldn't hear anybody, you know, if we were close to her. New Year's Eve and um, they found her, so it was kind of a miracle to me.